Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the next part in our Blender Python series. Um, so the last time we were taking a look at kind of how you get around this whole environment, what all these different screens do. Now we're going to be looking at um, how the data is actually set up inside of Blender. And so what do I mean by that? Well, we'll, we'll skip back over here for a second. And you can see we've got, you know, import bippy, and then we've got bippy.data, bippy.ops, bippy.props, bippy.types. And like I was saying in the in the previous video, it's kind of like Bippy is the container, and then inside of Bippy are all these other things. And primarily, we're going to be working with uh, two things, or I guess three. We're primarily going to be working with context and data, but the other, the third wheel that I kind of didn't really mention uh, is Bippy.ops, um, the the operators, so the things that actually do something. So context and data are just telling us, again, kind of what's happening in our scene. So context is what's currently happening, what area we're currently in, what object we currently have selected, whereas data is gonna be a list of, you know, everything that's in your scene. But in order to access those things, you're gonna need to know where they are. So there's a couple of examples um, that'll kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. So let's take this uh, cube that we've got here. Let's perform one of the you know most basic operations. So if you watch any you know Blender beginner tutorial, chances are you're going to see something like this. We're going to press the S key, then we're going to press the X key to scale it on the X axis. So here we go. S, X, and then I'm going to move my mouse, and that scales it up. And like I said before, in our console, we've got the uh, uh, the command here. Let's start a new. Uh, text file, and like always, import bippy. Don't forget to crank your font size up so people can read it. And then uh, let's, oh, maybe I actually want to crank that back down. <laughs> okay, well, let's, uh, let's go for an intermediate. Uh, let's go 24. Let's see that. And so I'm going to copy and paste that command up here. Um, you know what, there's something that we can do to make this a little easier to read because there's just so much going on here. Uh, so I'm going to close this down again, and um, we're going to be covering this in the next video, how this works. Um, so you'll just have to trust me on this, that this will work. We're going to do a little indentation. So because I'm finding all of this a little tough to read, I'm going to take everything that we can just get going on a single kind of indentation line and I'm going to bring that down so we can see everything that's happening here. Another one of those like, oh man, I got to worry about all this? No, you don't have to worry about all this. Um, and I guess we could bring this down or there or there, anywhere we want. I'll cover all that in the next video. This one's just about Blender. So uh, that is the command for what we just did. We scaled it up on the x-axis. Pretty simple. Um, it results in, you know, a whole bunch of this. Um, I will also tell you this. This line is the only thing we need. If we take all that out, um, it's still going to do what we want. Let's try it. There we go. Just did what we want. So these are all of uh, those things that I was talking to you about before, the default arguments. So if you don't pass anything else into Blender, um, it's going to say, oh, he doesn't want to mirror it. You know, you don't want to do this. You don't want to do that. Yeah, so th there are things that you don't need to write in. Um, you can simplify the command if you want. But basically what I'm going for is we scaled it on the x-axis. It resulted in this command bippy.ops.transform.resize, and then we passed a bunch of other stuff in. But basically, it just means we're resizing it. That's by how much. So what happens if we go, because uh, we know you, know you can do that in the 3D view. You scale up or down, do whatever you want. But you've also got this uh, scale right here. So you can see we scaled it up on the x-axis. You can see that value is larger. So we'll go back to the scripting tab and open up that same object panel here. And uh, what happens if we do this? So let's uh, crank this up a little. Uh, okay, we get this, bippy.context.object.scale. Um, so hold on, we uh, scaled it up in the viewport and we used an operator, bippy.ops. We scaled it up in the properties and we're just adjusting the scale of the currently selected object. So we're basically, you know, we're, we're doing the same thing, but we've got a couple of different ways to do it. And I'll show you one more too. Let's just comment these out for now. Um, again, all of this stuff that I'm doing Python wise will be covered in the next one where we start talking about how the language actually works and uh, how you can use it. So let's do bippy.data.ops.transform.resize. 
objects, and then I got a cube. So I'll call it cube because that's its name. Um, and then we'll do dot scale zero uh, equals five. Let's see what happens now. And there we go. Our scale is set to five. So what we're seeing here, and let me get rid of all the default arguments just to kind of simplify this a little bit. Um, so what we're seeing here is there's a few different ways to do everything. So yeah, I'll get them all going on one line. So we've got an operator, we've got context, and we've got data. When do you want to use each of them? How do you use them? And how does that relate to, you know, all this other stuff that is written down here? My general kind of rule of thumb is an operator is going to work on context. So an operator is going to work on whatever you have active. And the kind of nice thing about Blender um, is that whatever object you create is immediately the active object. So if you say want to create, um, you know, a, a monkey head, like you got the Suzanne head, and then you want to add a little body or something, um, when you create the head, it becomes the active object, and then any operator you want to uh, perform on it is just going to go onto that object. So if you're creating a Suzanne, here, let's just uh, create a Suzanne. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Now any operator that you uh, perform, you don't need to say, do that to Suzanne because it, it's just going to do it to whatever object is selected, whatever object is, the con, uh, is in the context at the moment. So the issue then becomes, okay, well, I've got, you know, my Suzanne down there. Now maybe I want to do an operator to my light. Now maybe I want to do an operator to, uh, you know, the camera. So you then have the issue of, well, if, you know, Suzanne's still selected, how do I perform something on this? And well, you can either switch to, you can select it in your code, or you can um, just access it by typing in bippy.data because it's still stored in the scene. So you might not be able to perform, uh, you know, the operator on it until you make it the context uh, object, the selected object or the active object. Um, but there are a lot of properties that you can adjust without using an operator. So we went in here and we pressed, you know, S to scale it up. And you can see down here, we've got that same thing again, transform resize, that super big long command. But if we go here, select those, set it to one, you can see we've got the same thing happening here. Context object scale. Doesn't use the operator, we're just directly adjusting the properties. So that's another little explanation of kind of when you use each, which we sort of already talked about in the last episode. But yeah, the bigger issue is kind of how to find each of these things. So let's take another example. So uh, a command that you uh, will probably do all the time is undo. So let's just undo in our viewport, you know, control Z. We're going back in our code, we're going back in our scene. So let's say we wanted to uh, code in that undo step. Um, you know, maybe there's something that, uh, that you want to do, like, um, you know, reassigning the key press, for example. So you need to just be able to say, I don't want it to be Control Z. I want it to be, uh, you know, Control Shift H L T P um, for whatever reason. Uh, then you would need to know what that how to call that undo operator so you can, uh, you know, unregister it from the uh, control Z and then reassign your new key map. So how do we find that? So let, let's let's take a little, um, you know, a little investigate. Like I said, we uh, do investigating in our interactive console. Um, I'm saying undo. So it's something that we want to do. I'm not saying like, you know, we got to change the scene's background, we got to change the light's intensity. So it's not like it's a, you know, it's a property of our scene that we're trying to adjust. So we can't just say, you know, bippy.scene dot all the things you do. Um, so it's going to be something that we do. So chances are it's an operator um, rather than, you know, an aspect or a property of an existing object. So 
how do we find this? Let's take a little investigation in our console. We go bippy.ops, autocomplete, says dot again, and now, okay, here we go. So where's my undo operator? So there's a, there's a, lot, of, there's a lot of things here. So um, what do we say, workspace? That sounds like something where that, that could maybe have an undo operator. Pain. Oh, okay, well, it's not in there. Okay, so let's go back and we'll see, uh, oh, world. It'll be in world, right? It's, oh, no, that's how to create a new world. Okay, so it's not in world. Where, where's our operator? Uh, WM. So you may not know this. I know WM stands for window manager. So I'm going to type in WM. It's, it's probably in window manager, right? Oh, look, there's tons. Uh, hmm. No, don't see undo. Okay. Well, that's, yeah, that's whatever. Let's, um, let's keep looking. Uh, oh, UI. Let's UI. Oh, no, you know what? That makes sense. It wouldn't be in there. Of course it wouldn't be in UI. Uh... Do, 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 do. Oh, screen scene. Maybe it's maybe it's in screen. Let's uh, and uh, it's not in any of those. So this is the issue that you will run into when you're trying to script something. Um, you will have a bunch of stuff you know exactly how to do, like the scale x and y, or you know whatever it is, and then you will have the next step that you're like, oh crap, w you know how do I find this? And the answer is that link that I showed you last time, Python API. So if you don't know where something is, this is the best place to go, because you can go undo, search for it, and bippy.ops.ed.undo. So I don't know how long it would have taken me to go through this list until I eventually guessed ed, which I assume stands for editor. Um, but yeah, I would have been there. <laughs> I would have been there a while trying to find something as simple as undo that you do all the time. Or you know, I could have gone up to the uh, edit and uh, held my whatever uh, mouse over top. Oh, hey, there's a great tip. So I uh, started this series in 3.1, Blender 3.1, and uh, today that I'm making this is the day that Blender 3.2 came out. So I am now working in 3.2. None of my uh, preferences or add-ons or anything are set up. So since, uh, you know, they're not, since I don't have my defaults, um, I didn't get what I expected there, which was the actual Python operator to pop up when I hovered over that. So let's see where we can find that. Edit, preferences, and there it is, Python tooltips. That was nice and easy. Close that, and now we go back, edit, undo, hover our mouse, and we can see bippy.ops.add.undo. So, you know, there's usually easier ways than banging your head against the console over and over again. But um, again, for as a beginner, especially if you're, you know, looking in the console for something, you're just like, oh, what's the, you know, how do I access this? You look something up and then you're trying to find the next thing. You're tempted just to keep scrolling in there. But sometimes, you know, like I said, if you know what it's called and you don't know that exact path to access it, if you know how to do it, if you know how to, you know, hover over, if you've got those Python tooltips enabled or just search in the API and have that answer instantly. Um, and that was the easiest way for me to do that, um, for me to find the, uh, the undo. Well, that's probably the easiest, but hey, who's counting? I'm a unique thinker. So yeah, getting back to the API then. Um, okay, confession time. Um, I reread these documents uh, for the first time in, geez, a handful of years probably. And I found, um, I think it's this one. Um, this gave a really clear, concise explanation of how things worked. And I'm not sure if the docs have gotten better over time or if I just read this, you know, read this closer and understand it a little better. Um, so possibly blame should be on me and the, you know, the Blender dev team and the community have, uh, put together this this great documentation but anyway it is this um api reference usage that covers how this works because this was one of the things that i found really confusing at first i would go into the api and i would say okay well how do you know how do i know what all the different um things uh what all the different properties of like a, a node are you know how do i know what all the different properties of a mesh are like I can adjust scale and rotation and you know, like what are, what are all the different things I can do to these different things? And you're inevitably gonna end up in types because types, uh, and I think I mentioned this in a previous video, are where every single different thing that you can access through this API are stored. So these are all the different data types that you can access. So if you wanna know how nodes work, 
well, there's a node. And let's just click on this random node. And now you can see everything that this node can do, every, you know, everything about it, all the properties that it has. So if you wanted to adjust its dimensions, there you go. If you wanted to know its name, if you wanted to change its label, um, you know, you need to connect an input to an output. This is how you can kind of get all of this info. So you, you have to kind of track this down, you know, you find your node that you want, you find all the properties that it has, it's got an input, input is a collection of sockets, so we find what a socket is, and sockets have all of these. Um, so you're going down a little bit of a rabbit hole with this stuff. But once you've finally found, you know, let's say it's draw color, the color of the socket. So maybe that was the thing you wanted. I wanted to know how to change the color of a node socket. And so you took this long journey from, uh, where did we go? From uh, compositor node, we went into types, we found the node that we wanted, we found the uh, thing that we wanted to access, and we went on down the thing. And then you get back into Blender and you go, wait a minute, where are all my types? Where, where's my types? And uh, the answer is back in this reference usage. Because, highlight this, the API reference covers types, which stores types accessed via context or data. So you're going to have types here. You're gonna look up, you know, anytime you need to look up a property of something, property of an armature, um, you're gonna find types armature. Anytime you want to access an armature in your scene, you need to be able to find that via context or data because you need to access the armature that you're actually working on, not just the sort of, you know, generic data type, um, uh, the defaults. You know, you want to work on the armature, the, the skeleton, the bones that uh, are working on the characters in your scene. Um, so you need to be referencing the context or the data. So. Yeah, like I said, it, it's made pretty clear up here, and I think possibly I was just being thick, but um, it's one of the trickiest things that I found when I was first starting. Like, you just, you know, they're going to be called this here, they're called this here, well, they're also called this here, and depending on what you want to do, you know, you might run into an error trying one. And that, I guess, uh, leads us to our, uh, our next big topic, which is error messages. So let's take a classic example. Uh, we've got this. Copy this up here. And I'm going to um, bring this into rows again. And like I said, this, this will be covered why, why this works and how this works in the next one. Um, this is just going to illustrate a couple of things for us here. So da 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 da. I probably should have chosen one that didn't have so many arguments. Whatevs. OK. So this is our operator. Um, we hit it, we know it works. Let's just undo it for now. Um, when you start writing your own code, there are a handful of things that might happen that will cause it to not run. So I press this, I know it runs, but I make any little change and it's, you know, it's not gonna run. So here's a, you know, an error message that you're probably gonna see for something like a typo. So calling operator bippy.ops.transform.resize error could not be found. So this is one of those, you might pull your hair out over this error if you don't do a close read. So <laughs> it's always a good idea to do a close read of your code because, you know, if you put in a, or like something like an RM, RN, sometimes, you know, you can have a little typo that you don't really notice. It looks fine with a quick glance, but um, a closer inspection will reveal, oh, I just spelled that wrong. So I know that this is, uh, you know, the, the error comes up and then at the bottom here, attribute error, that's gonna give you the most information um, about what the error is. And then up at the very top, it says, trace back most recent call in your file, uh, file text. So that's the name of our file, line three. So it tells us where exactly the error is. So line three, there was a problem. We tried to call this operator, couldn't be found. So basically it doesn't exist. So we put this N back in where we know it should go. Bam, it works again. So that was um, you know, a pretty obvious one. One that got me, and again, 
massive props to the Blender developers um, because this was <laughs> this is the era that I referenced where I would just do this all the time. Um, so what typically happens is, you know, I, I put this operator in, I pass in an argument, and then I want to pass another one, and maybe then, you know, eventually I think, okay, a third one. So I pass the first one in, put a comma, and then I write the second one in, and I don't put a comma because I just, you know, close it. Then I decide, oh, you know what? I do want to add another. And so I get rid of that. We add a new line and I add another command, kind of like we've just done now. But I forget to add the comma there. And you get an error message. And let's see. This is such a beautiful error message, I, I can't tell you. Um, there was a long time where, you know, I would get this synt invalid syntax, invalid syntax, syntax error. And I'd be going, why? What, you know, what did I do? I thought I was, I thought I was getting this. I thought it was, you know, this equals and then this in brackets, this kind of brackets, these kind of quotes. Um, and it was mostly this, mostly just I set up something with a couple of arguments and then I added an extra one and I forgot to add a comma. So I am now in the habit, I don't know if this is good practice or bad practice, of just adding a comma every time I add something. So that on the off chance, I wanna add another argument equals whatever, um, that I won't have that syntax error because I've already you know, eliminated that possibility by putting that comma in. But even if you do, you know, the, the Blender people are there for you. Invalid syntax. Perhaps you forgot a comma on line 11. What a what a what a what a beautiful thing. So there are two error messages that uh, you'll probably see. You'll probably see a syntax error uh, if you forget a comma. You will probably see um, you know could not be found if you spell something wrong. Um, and you can always double check by finding something in the. Uh, the console here. But there's one more error message that I want to go over in this one, and it's the one that you will probably be banging your head against the most, and that is the context error. All right, the dreaded context error. So I'll give you uh, the, the first example. So um, you know we can do a subdivision operation, basically make uh, you know something smooth it out, add more uh, geometry to it. So we are going to uh, subdivide. And let's see, how would we do that? We go bippy.ops.mesh.subdivide. So we know this is a thing we can do. You know, we've probably done it a bunch of times. So bippy.ops.mesh, you know, just double check. We get, is this in here? bippy.ops.mesh.s dot su subdivide looks like it's there okay and you can do oh a number of cuts you can do a whole bunch of things okay well we're not going to do this we'll just pass this in as the um you know the the default arguments so let's run this script uh-oh so failed in line three makes sense it's only three lines long runtime error operator bippy.ops.mesh.subdivide.poll failed context is incorrect. So what is that telling us? So basically it's saying um, bippy.ops.mesh.subdivide, this operator subdivide has this uh, method called poll, where it will say before it runs, it's going to look around and say, okay, am I in the right editor? Am I in the right context? Because it, it's a mesh, we want to subdivide it, we can't do that to, you know, an image in the image editor. You know, so there's there's a bunch of things that Blender can work on that can't be subdivided or you can't use that particular method on it. So we have this thing called a poll that will take a look around and say, okay, are you trying to use this in the right area? Are you trying to use this on the right object? And if not, I'm not gonna work. I'm just gonna throw up an error and it's gonna say, you can't do that here. Um, and sure enough, context is incorrect. So like I said, this is going to be one of those errors you're going to see a bunch because at some point in your writing, you're going to try to do something in some context um, 
one that I find I often do is, you know, if you're trying to work on something that's not in the 3D view, like when I was uh, working on an add-on in the shader editor, I'd get a lot of context errors because when I'd hit run, the uh, context that it would return would be the text editor. And then when it tries to, you know, work on context.active object, it's looking in the 3D view. So I'm trying to do this work in the shader editor. Meanwhile, it's looking in the text editor and the 3D view, and it's not, you know, making any connection there. So um, we'll have, or I'll have more information about how to get around context errors because uh, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, one is that initial way that I showed you, where maybe you don't want to use an operator. Maybe, if possible, you want to access the data because um, then you can kind of do that anytime, anywhere. Um, another one is you can you know, select that object and make it the active context. Um, and then there are more advanced solutions that involve you know, switching the area that you're in or um, overriding context entirely um, to just perform the operation that you want to perform. Um, but like I said, that's a more advanced thing. This is really just kind of like getting your feet wet. So that is, um, you know, how to access all of the data in Blender. That is how you can, you know, apply the types that you see in the API to the actual stuff that's in your scene. Um, and, you know, what to do about those first few error messages that you get, you know, kind of how to read it and hopefully a little bit of an idea about when you might want to use context uh, or when you might want to use data instead. And if anything is unclear, I think probably a lot of it will be cleared up when we get um, a couple more parts in and we start actually, um, you know, making some of these add-ons and we put some of this stuff that I'm talking about into practice. So hopefully that's been helpful for some people. Um, the next uh, episode is gonna be that dreaded one that I've been mentioning for a while where we're actually gonna learn a little bit about how Python works, how to read and write the language. <laughs>